welcome back students today we shall discuss about the concept of uncertainty principle so this concept of uncertainty principle has provided one of the important contribution to the development of quantum mechanics almost all the problems that has come across in quantum mechanics can be solvable with this particular concept therefore uh, in the recent days the uncertainty principle has led to a new sub category of quantum mechanic called as matrix mechanics so before going to the actual discussion we shall understand the term uncertainty what is uncertainty see uncertainty in the sense in the direct uh, context it is basically the we are not sure about the data we are basically having a dilemma the doubt about the available data so uh, with regard to the concept of quantum mechanics is concerned uncertainty is one parameter reflecting the error so there is a marginal difference between uncertainty and the error term because see if you go to the minuteness of the measurement aspect error concept will be used whenever there is known value for us the standard value of the given parameters or quantity is known to us for example if you know uh, the, if you want to come we are conducting the experiment on uh, the um, measurement of accelerated gravity as you so you know that g is equal to 9.8 meter per second square so that value is known to us standard is known to us now what to do you are going to perform the experiment and you have got some value for for that particular uh, measurement then what you do you are going to find the difference between the actual data with that of the measured data and that will be the amount of error if at all you want to find a percentage of error what you will do you will find out the difference in the value delta g over the actual value g into 100 that gives you the percentage of error this is what you are going to perform but the concept of uncertainty is commonly used in that particular area where we want to show the range of uh, variations uh, apart from this uh, for example you see if we don't know the actual value or standard value of the given parameter in such case what we do is we are going to perform many number of measurements for that particular quantity for about say let's 100 measurements you will perform and then you will find out what is the amount of lowest and uh, range of deviation you find out then that will gives you the concept that will gives you the parameter called as uncertainty so thus for example if i if i want to find a length of a given object the standard value is unknown to me then what i will do i will calculate main number of it perform the measurements main number of times and a range of error i will give so stand central value i will take the more most repeated data so i will take it as a, a actual one plus or minus the range that is for example if the length available is about 10 cm 10 plus or minus uh, 0.5 if it is like that then that parameter plus or minus 0.5 is the uncertainty term okay that is a sharp difference between uh, uncertainty and uh, error but however uh, uh, at the outset we can think that uncertainty will reflects the error of error in the measurement then uh, there will be another important aspect you have to uh, answer for this so uncertainty principle with regard to the quantum mechanics is being concerned it is basically applicable only for the simultaneous measurement of two physical quantities that is another important thing you should always remember right that is i have to select two physical quantities let us say x and y for a given system and those x and y parameters must be measured at a time then only we can apply the concept of uncertainty principle this is being uh, introduced by heisenberg okay so we shall see what is the actual uh, statement of the uncertainty principle see uncertainty principle can be stated in uh, many ways of course so but i will go for uh, three important types of uh, statements 
first of all it is impossible to determine accurately the position and momentum of the microscopic particles simultaneously so look at the wordings here we cannot measure both position and momentum of a given microscopic particle accurately and simultaneously there is a meaning so accurately means we can't get the exact value of both position and momentum if you perform the measurement at the same time see in this particular uh, statement the keywords are accurate and simultaneous if you forget these two words there is no meaning for the uncertainty principle at all okay so the same principle can also be stated in this way in any simultaneous determination of position and momentum of the particle the uncertainty is inherently present and the product of their uncertainty is always be greater than or equal to h by 4 pi this is one of the specific uh, way of representing the uncertainty principle where you know what is the range of error greater than or equal to h by 4 pi shows you the amount of uncertainty okay there is always be exist that is uh, already we have seen that the accuracy cannot be there and the amount of uncertainty is of the order of greater than or equal to h by 4 pi r is one of the order of h only you can also take also acceptable so this is another way but most standard way of representing the uncertainty principle is to generalize it so in both the previous uh, definitions or statements we have taken up only position and momentum so it doesn't mean that the uncertainty will exist always only between these two parameters so you can apply uncertainty principle for any pair of measurements of course but it must satisfy some conditions okay what are the conditions i am saying ko so now it is impossible to determine accurately the pair of variables related to the motion of atomic system or microscopic system simultaneously see in this uh, sentence also should not forget about the two major words accurately and simultaneously so that plays a very significant role and while selecting the two physical quantities or pair of variables for the measurement then you should always use those two parameters or those two quantities must be canonically conjugate to each other that is one should be independent variable other should be dependent variable that means if you select one of the parameter x the other parameter y should reflect the variation of other physical quantities for example you can consider uh, uh, one particle which is of having a mass m it is made to move with a velocity v so thereby it forms a wavelength or de broglie wavelength lambda then uh, uh, one can have the momentum of the particle as p then uh, we can have the uh, kinetic energy as ek or it may be the total energy as e or potential energy as v several physical quantities are available with us but while selecting these parameters i will consider x as one independent variable whereas while selecting the next variable so that particular variable should always reflect on the variation of other parameter that is if that variable changes if that particular quantity changes then it must gives the uh, reflection of other uh, physical quantities also for example if you can consider uh, x as one independent variable that will keep it aside then if you select v only velocity only if you consider it then it won't reflect any variation regarding the momentum and other parameters whereas if you consider momentum as the one first physical quantity then any change momentum can reflect on the velocity variation similarly momentum variation can reflect on the kinetic energy variation and so on therefore now we can combine the position and momentum as one group one particular uh, pair which is identified as the canonically conjugate variables therefore you can straight away write down if you said delta x is the amount of error in our uncertainty in finding the position of the particle and delta p the amount of uh, uncertainty in finding the momentum of the particle then the product delta x into delta p must be greater than or equal to h by 4 pi okay
so this is what the importance of this or basic uh, thing you should always remember with while uh, defining the term uncertainty principle okay then how we can explain this uh, analogy uh, see you may question that uh, uh, why can't we apply this uh, uncertainty principle for uh, macroscopic system or what difference is there in the approach of classical physics is that of the quantum physics that also can be well understood with this say for example i will consider one object or a body which is in a position x okay so now i will uh, make the body to move with some velocity v so when the given body begins to move then what happens the uh, by simply knowing the position of the object at a particular instant of time t we can simply find out we can simply estimate the value of x by t that is the matter velocity therefore you see i am using the word estimating so the term estimation means you are predicting you are actually identifying you are not basically determining the value instead you are actually estimating you are actually uh, calculating the value there okay so that means in all our most of the measurements in classical physics the determination is only with respect to one physical quantity from that determination we are going to uh, calculate other uh, variables in fact okay but this does not holds good in quantum physics because of the fact that in case of uh, quantum mechanics what happens the according to de broglie hypothesis we know that as the given particle begins to move with some velocity then it will become it will show some wave nature so the particular particulate uh, probability will be get reduced and the wave probability becomes more significant so that's why it is very difficult for us to find out the path or the motion of a microscopic particle with better accuracy that's why the concept of uncertainty principle applies uh, only to the microscopic system but it is not so significant with respect to macroscopic scale so i will come to the one illustration the uh, next part of the discussion however then another thing is to how you predict so now we have understood that we can apply the uncertainty concept only for a microscopic system therefore uh, if you can write the uncertainty equation between position and momentum parameters we have delta x and delta p greater than equal to h by 4 pi so you observe here the right hand side h by 4 pi is a constant factor so in this particular case either i can have variation with respect to delta x or maybe with respect to delta p only for example uh, if you can find out or i want delta x to be minimum means what if i say delta x is minimum uncertainty is minimum or the error is minimum means to say the value of x is very much accurate that's the meaning of that okay so uh, whenever i have used the term delta x minimum it implies that the parameter x should be very accurate in the same way we can also apply for the value of delta p also therefore most appropriate way of representing the uncertainty principle is we can write delta x minimum into delta p maximum greater than equal to h by 4 pi one way or i can write delta x maximum and delta p minimum that is also possible that means it all depends upon your requirement if you are in need of i am uh, i want uh, the position of the particle to be very accurate to be measured at one instant of time where i want to calculate the momentum also in fact then if you give importance for finding the position of the particle to be more precise then you will come across large amount of error occurrence in the measurement of the momentum or vice versa okay then we can say we can have or in fact as i told you in the beginning itself uncertainty principle does not applies only between position and momentum it applies between any two conjugate pairs conjugate with canonically conjugate pairs therefore in this uh, regard we can are in most of the quantum mechanical measurements 
we prefer three major equations to be uh, playing a significant role. One is delta x and delta p given equal to x by 4 pi, that is position and momentum uncertainty. And we have second important uh, relationship, delta e into delta t given equal to x by 4 pi, it's called as energy time uncertainty. And we have the third important equation, delta theta into delta j given equal to x by 4 pi. So it is called angular displacement and angular momentum uncertainty. See, observe the first and the last equation. See, first equation will represent it for a linear motion of the particle. Whereas the third equation shows it is for the angular motion. It means, it means to say that the uncertainty principle does not apply only for the motion along a straight line. It can apply even for the curved path also. That is why all the three equations are more prominently being used in the study of quantum mechanics. Then what is the significance of this particular product we have to understand again. So we may say that uh, uh, product of two uncertainties is of the order of h. There is Planck's constant. So you know the Planck's constant values of the order of 10 to the power of minus 34 joule seconds. It's a very, very smaller value. Then, why this? Why we have to bother about this small error? There is a question in your mind. So, in fact, you see, you are all discussing with respect to a microscopic scale where the uh, values are very, very small. Therefore, a very minute physical quantity what you are measuring must be perfectly or uh, accurately to be estimated, then only it is to be considered. So you cannot say, hey, for example, uh, uh, 10 to the power of minus 34 means what? 0 0.000, etc. 33 times followed by 1. While doing so, if I have, uh, while measuring that particular quantity, if I get 10 to the power of minus 33, when you go to the macroscopic system, if you compare the macro, it is negligible. Because in all our uh, practical situation, you'll accept it, where 0 0.000 can be taken as zero only. But that is not applicable in case of microscopic system. So since we are going for atomic and subatomic scale, each and every zero and at its own position is having its own meaning. So that's why uh, the product of this particular error to be taken so precisely is of the order of H. Then second thing is, it is because of the consequence of the Kiberglai process, which is definitely true. So why we are unable to measure the two physical quantities over a motion of an atomic system simultaneously? That is the question. It's all because of the fact that the wave nature plays a significant role. Means, as per de Broglie concept, you know, the particle, when it is at rest, it shows 100% probability of particle nature. No wave nature is present. But when you make the particle to move with some velocity, then the particulate nature itself, vanish, which goes on, reduces, and the wave nature becomes more significant there. That's why, because of the spreading up of the wave packet, it is unable, we are unable to find out the exact location of particle at that position. Therefore, uncertainty must be because of the uh, de Broglie wave. Okay. Then, definitely, it should, must be signified with the microscopic particle. Already, we have covered that. But uh, illustration, I want to show that we will go, it, go for the next part. Then, the uncertainty principle will uh, gives you a, another important clue that definite path for the subatomic particles can be predicted. So, as you know, position and uh, velocity of the particle momentum in a sense, m into delta v, m into v itself, it is nothing but uh, p or m into delta v is delta p. So, when, when you say that uh, uh, the position of the particle can't be predicted with uh, greater uh, uh, arrangement rather, or the, uh, we cannot have the proper uh, uh, path of the particle, 
cannot be basically predicted at the same time. Uh, that is why the uh, moving particle, the measurements, whatever you perform with the moving particle and the atomic scale, it is always be having some uncertainty. Okay, this is what the significance. Then we shall have an illustration uh, why uh, we cannot apply the uncertainty principle for a macroscopic object. Say so for that, I will uh, consider one ordinary ball. I consider a ball of mass 0.5 kg. Okay, and we have an electron of mass. 9.1 to the power of minus 31 kg. That is, whatever the ball, what I am considering, it is physically, we can feel that, we can sense it, and it is a macroscopic object. So, electron, it is invisible, we can't feel that, therefore, it is a microscopic object. Now, apply the uncertainty for the ball. So, when you apply the uncertainty principle, delta x into delta p, greater than or equal to h by 4 pi, if you consider that, then, we can calculate what is the value of the momentum. If you consider the position of the object at one centimeter uh, length, okay, then I can calculate what is the value of delta p for it. So, when once you calculate delta p, calculate m into delta v. So, that is nothing but delta p divided by m will give you delta v. So, delta v will be of the order of 10 to the power of minus 32 meter per second. So, this amount of error in velocity has no significance in the case of uh, uh, macroscopic world. Therefore, this particular value is negligible and we can measure both position and momentum with certain degree of accuracy in case of macroscopic scale. But if you take the case of an electron, same procedure holds good where you see that delta V will be of a drop. 10 to the power of 5 meter per second and this is said to be uh, most significant rather delta v 10 to the power of 5 meter per second is significant so that's why the um, there is an error occurrence to be taken into consideration for any simultaneous measurement of position momentum in case of microscopic objects then the one of the important application of the uncertainty principle is to show the electron does not exist inside the nucleus. See, while uh, going for uh, this type of analysis, so this is one of the major applications of the uncertainty principle because you are all familiar with the fact that according to Bohr's uh, theory of uh, atomic model, uh, we have got an electron around, around the nucleus in circular orbits. Those electrons cannot be available in the nucleus at all. So, this is only a, uh, uh, the model we are using, the most popular model we are using to explain the uh, structure of an atom. But uh, we don't have any other uh, calculations for that. So, the uncertainty principle can only give the answer for uh, this particular uh, uh, question where the electron cannot be present inside the nucleus. So, why this question arises? That is the important for us. See, after the development of atomic physics, people started working on the nucleus of the atom, where nuclear physics was coming to picture. There are various theories on radioactivity, radioactive disintegration, etc. was identified. There are three major particles are uh, uh, found well, alpha particle, beta particle, and the gamma particle. All these three particles are emitted from a radioactive nucleus. Out of this, you see, if you take the alpha particle, it is identified as 2 helium 4. That is the alpha particle, 2 helium 4. Whereas the gamma particle is a stream of uh, high frequency photons, H nu. But what about the beta particle. So, beta particle is nothing but stream of electrons. That is minus 1 E 0. That is the representation of a beta particle. So, question begins. When you say the alpha particle or beta particle or gamma particle, 
if all the three are able to emit from the nucleus right then question begins of course forget about alpha forget about gamma so question is with respect to beta beta particle is nothing but the stream of electron therefore the electron must be there inside the nucleus that was the stand among uh, the nuclear uh, physics in fact so that has been experimentally proven so electrons are emitted from a unstable uh, nucleus then the question was uh, uh, raised at that time uh, there must be something wrong in the atomic model itself so at that time the uncertainty principle has uh, extent in fact theoretically it has proven that the electrons cannot exist inside the nucleus okay so let us go for that uh, calculations so if you take the uh, studies on uh, various nuclides say for example uh, if you take the hydrogen nucleus so if you calculate the uh, radius r is equal to r not a to the power of 1 by 3 that is the nuclear radius from which calculate the diameter of the nucleus etc so you will see that the diameter of the nucleus comes out to be about uh, uh, 1.2 something or 1.5 something in 10 to the power of the minus 15 meters certain formula say a femtometers we call it as 10 to the power of minus 15 meters means femtometer about 1.5 femtometer for hydrogen nucleus similarly you do the calculations for example if you go to the uh, heavy nuclear let us say uranium 238 it comes out to be about 11.2 femtometers like that you keep on calculating the nuclear diameter for various nucleus with by knowing the mass number capital a right you will see that list of values are going to get and find the average of that you will come across the average diameter of the nucleus is of the order of 5 into 10 to the power of minus 15 meter about 5 for me okay thus we can predict like this if an electron is found to be in the nucleus then it must be found anywhere within the small distance of 5 into 10 to the power of minus 15 meter okay so to make it uh, still clear so consider now i am having this uh, yellow circle is actually the nucleus where i am having one electron the electron is found at the topmost part of this uh, uh, nucleus assume now i will draw a line that is joining this particular i become say chord in fact the chord of maximum length is the diameter of course for a circle therefore it must be the value of 5 into 10 to the power of minus 15 meter therefore we can say the electron even though it is present inside the nucleus at one position then the probability of finding the particle should be within this particular distance of the diameter of the given nucleus so take another example let us say i'll take one more uh, same type of nucleus of course so again how i will consider that the uh, given uh, new electron is toward the left side of the given nucleus then again i will draw a line that line also shows nothing but the uh, diameter of the nucleus likewise you consider uh, third probability where electron is somewhere orienting at the or the in between that of the right uh, position then again if you draw a line it shows again the diameter of the uh, given uh, nucleus thus let us say electron may be anywhere inside the nucleus so you can easily say that the probability or we can identify the position of the electron inside the nucleus within a distance of the diameter of the nucleus that's all okay therefore in this type, the particular example, I am considering the average diameter of nucleus comes out to be of the order of 5 into 10 power minus 15 meter. So that's why we can say the electron, if at all it is present inside a nucleus, it must be found anywhere within a small distance of 5 femtometers. Okay. 
thereby now i have got the position of the electron is x x is 10 to the power of 5 in 10 to the power of minus 15 meter now what is the maximum error you can commit in finding position of the electron inside the nucleus that is the but delta x maximum okay that delta x maximum must also be equal to that of the diameter of the nucleus okay now apply uncertainty equation for uh, this particular uh, uh, application we can write delta x maximum it, because we know the value of delta x maximum i have considered delta x maximum here into delta p minimum greater than or equal to h by 4 pi or from this calculation i can assume that delta p minimum will be of the order of h by 4 pi into delta x maximum that is always be true right so from this discussion if you calculate the overall value of delta p minimum it comes out to be of the order of 1.05 into 10 to the power of minus 20 kg meter per second okay now i will uh, go for a lowest probably lowest possibility i will consider where the minimum momentum of the electron inside the nucleus is considered to be of the order of delta p minimum itself then i can write p minimum as equal to 1.05 into 10 to the power of minus 20 kg meter per second so by knowing the value of uh, p minimum apply the relativistic expression for energy of the electron inside the nucleus it is found to be e is equal to root of p square c square plus m naught square c to the power of 4 this is according to the relativity that is the basic difference in the uh, classical physics and that of the relativity is in the relativistic mechanics we are going to have mass of the particle also be a variable with respect to velocity where in case of the macroscopic system mass of the particle remains same in other words we can have a significant variation in the mass of the given particle with respect to velocity takes place if it is capable of moving having a velocity comparable to the velocity of light so since you know electrons or any other microscopic uh, particles are able to have a velocity which is nearer to the velocity of light therefore this relativistic expression is the most appropriate one to uh, calculate the energy of the given particle therefore e, min e minimum that is you know that uh, we have already calculated p minimum value obviously other the, all other quantities are uh, same in this equation we can write e minimum as equal to root of the so much uh, is a substitution if you make out you will after calculation you will come across that the energy of the electron inside the nucleus is of the order of 20 mev what does it suggest so you can see they can say that whenever an electron wants to be inside the nucleus then it must possess a minimum energy of 20 mev right that is electrons inside a nucleus must be always be in motion and it must have a minimum energy of 20 million electron volts which is a very big quantity it can also be uh, analyzed like this if an electron comes out of the nucleus and if you measure the energy of the emitted electron then it must also be having a value of around 20 mev in beta particle energy during nuclear beta decay experiments it has been observed that so you can see there is no comparison now e minimum according to uh, the uncertainty equation shows that it is nothing but 20 mev but e maximum due to nuclear beta decay experiments during this beta decay experiment is of the order of 4 mev both of them are not at all comparing each other therefore one can say the electron does not pre-exist inside the nucleus pre-exist that is very important so that means electrons are not actually present in the nucleus at all but how to now explain the electron or beta particle emission during nuclear beta disintegration so during nuclear beta decay experiments what happens the there is a mutual conversion between neutrons to protons takes place and this but during this particular process the electron is being formed actually once the electron is formed it will be emitted out of the given nucleus in the form of a 
beta particle. Therefore, this one such possibility I have shown here, zero n one neutron getting into a proton where you have a formation of an electron minus one is zero. This is identified as the beta minus disintegration. Similarly, we can have another possibility if a proton converts into a neutron. So one h one is a proton converts into a neutron. Then there is a formation of a positron antiparticle of a uh, electron. It is formed. There is one e zero. This is identified as the beta plus disintegration. So in total, the uncertainty principle has clearly shown that electron does not exist inside the nucleus. The first option shows that is applicable only between these two. Second option shows only between energy and time. Third option shows only between angular momentum and angular displacement and it is actually for any two chemical conjugate variables is the perfect option right then similarly we can go for the second uh, quiz uncertainty in the pair of variables exists when they are measured simultaneously when they are measured independently in both the cases as in a and b so both in simultaneous measurement as well as in the independent measurement and none of this so so as the statement itself shows that in any simultaneous determination or the accuracy cannot be expected in any simultaneous measurement of two physical quantities that's what the uncertainty statement is there therefore the option should be the first one when they are measured simultaneously so if you measure the position of the object in some other instant or the momentum of the object in some other instant then definitely we can get some accuracy but not at a time that is very important okay third particular possibility the uncertainty principle can be applied both for microscopic and macroscopic systems first option only for microscopic systems only for macroscopic systems none of this See, as you already observed in the illustration that we can have an option to apply the uncertainty principle only for microscopic scale, not for the macroscopic system. Therefore, this should be the option should be the B that is only for 